Well, welcome to the 700 Club. It's one of the largest evacuations in Florida history. Millions of people are in the path of Hurricane Milton as it approaches the Gulf Coast. The powerful storm is expected to hit Sarasota just south of Tampa Bay. Forecasters predict a potentially devastating storm surge as much as 15 feet. Residents are urgently preparing and praying as Milton approaches. George Thomas has more. Hurricane hunters from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association got a taste of Milton's ferociousness as they flew into the storm Monday. Can we grab my phone real quick? The storm is forecast to hit near Sarasota, just south of Tampa Bay, late Wednesday night or early Thursday morning. The forecast for Milton has not really changed very much. We're still expecting a powerful hurricane uh, to reach the coast of Florida as we get into the uh, late evening hours. In San Mateo County, Browning Pierce Elementary has turned its gymnasium into an evacuation center. Pastor Marquise Brinson of the Holy Word Revival Center is bringing some homeless individuals from her community here to seek shelter. I let them know the beginning um, yesterday when I rode around, hey, I'll be back to bring you guys in. And then so we decide to also make bags to keep them, sustain them for the next couple of days, along with hygiene bags. The urgency is palpable, with many praying for safety and for the storm's strength to diminish before landfall. Pastor Jane Hammond of Vision Church in Santa Rosa, Florida, posting on Facebook, asking the Lord to send a shearing wind from the north to disrupt the storm and cause it to diminish to a minimal storm before it lands. We hope and pray that, uh, that our home's intact and everything's fine and we can you know, even if some things are minor, hopefully, that we'll, we'll get things taken care of. The big concern with Milton right now is storm surge. And in this purple area, basically from Pinellas County, Hillsborough County, Tampa Bay, Sarasota, Manatee County, somewhere in this region is going to experience 10 to 15 feet of inundation above ground level. This is destructive, life-threatening storm surge, not a safe environment to stay in. As the storm nears, Tampa residents like Karina Kobil are not taking any chances after recent experiences with flooding. With Helene, we had about six feet of water inside our home, and they're predicting the surge to be about 10 to 15 feet, which is twice as much as Helene. East of Tampa, in Clearwater Beach, residents there scrambling to remove debris from Helene. We're just trying to clear as much as we can out and just Pray for the best. Venice resident Daniel Cruz and many others are stepping up to help, ready to weather the storm together. I was just overwhelmed by the, the Holy Spirit to just help others, help everybody as I can. And if, if I can help others to see that, that's what I'm here for. CBN's Operation Blessing is already on the ground in Valdosta, Georgia, helping those hit by Hurricane Helene. It's moving more resources into the area to help victims of Milton once it clears. George Thomas, CBN News. Well, let's continue to pray that this storm will diminish. It was a Cat 5, now it's a Cat 3. Let's take it all the way down to tropical depression. Uh, it wouldn't it be nice if it was just a gentle rain. Uh, but a 15-foot storm surge, that's something that everyone should get out of the way. CBN's Operation Blessing is also hard at work helping Helene's victims in western North Carolina. Nearly two weeks after the storm hit, many people remain homeless and without food and water. CBN's Brody Carter shows us how Operation Blessing is giving them aid and comfort. Operation Blessing is on the ground in one of the hardest hit areas of Swannanoa, North Carolina. They're currently putting up shelters and tents for people who need it most, and you can see why. Houses completely ripped away. This belonged to Toby Banks, who lives along the Swannanoa River, now living in tents on his property. <laughs> Whose tent is this? This is my tent. So you're going to be living here now? That's it. That's right. Forecasts show temperatures will soon drop quickly here, and that means survivors of Helene, like Joe Bryant and Roy Banks, will depend even more on those who've come to help. There was only one way out. Um, the day after the storm, all of this was covered in water. 
Stationed in Asheville, water is one of the priorities of Operation Blessings Mobile Command Center. Um, it's beginning to come out. Disaster teams are providing clean water and thousands of hot meals here at the Home Depot, while also sending out teams to help survivors get supplies they need. I wouldn't wish this on nobody. I've seen this on TV uh, my whole life, but I never thought I'd be living it. Uh, we find our peace in being the hands and feet of Jesus. Uh, even though we see things that may uh, distract us or traumatize us a little bit, uh, the actual ability to help other people and to see the relief in their eyes as we address their needs, is it's absolutely amazing. In Greater Asheville, nearly 10,000 people have no access to water, a crisis situation that could last for up to six weeks. One, I think we're thinking more like that storage. Bob building. Burke believes his Operation Blessing team will be here for the long term, continuing to provide hope and support well after attention to the plight of this region leaves the spotlight. A huge outpouring of support, tremendous amounts of supplies will arrive, but three, four, five weeks from now, these folks are still gonna need assistance and help, and I'm just praying that people don't forget them. I got to sleep yesterday, it was magical. For Haley Henson, a seasoned journalist and OB media liaison. Hey, look, tell them about how you lost your home and your car, tell them. Asheville is more than just another disaster area, it's home. You know, when you live here and you work for Operation Blessing, I've cried so many times on camera, but when you live here, these are the rivers that we go out and we fly fish in. These mountains are healing, they're beautiful. And to see so, much, so many people hurt, to see your own community impacted by this, it's heartbreaking. Even though it's tough work, it's also the heart mission of Operation Blessing, restoring affected communities and people by helping, serving, and praying for one person at a time. Reporting in Western North Carolina, Brody Carter, CBN News. If you want to be a part of the relief effort, uh, what's happening in Western North Carolina is just absolutely mind-boggling. I. Uh, yeah, I have to, in my own mo lifetime, I have to go all the way back to Camille to find something similar that hit um, the Allegheny Mountains. And, and here are people without homes and winter coming, and, and we need to be there for them. We need to help them in their time of need. Right now, the need is food and water, but longer term, you can't be in that tent during the winter. So how can we find housing for them? How can we provide for them? It's all up to us to say, okay, what can we do? How can we roll up our sleeves and get involved and, and be a part? If you want to be a part of the relief effort, it's real simple. Pick up a phone and call us, 1-800-700-7000. If you want to volunteer for it, there's a place where you can go on the Operation Blessing website to volunteer your services. But if you want to give, Here's the address, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Just put Disaster Relief Fund in the memo line of a check. You can call 1-800-700-7000. You can go to CBN.com. There's a place on the giving page where you can designate your gift to Disaster Relief. Or you can text OBDR to 71777. Well, in other news, federal authorities have arrested a man suspected of plotting an Election Day terror attack. Efren Graham has that story and more from the CBN Newsroom. Efren? Gordon, the FBI says Nasir Ahmed Tahedi of Oklahoma City was inspired by the Islamic State terror group and had been in contact with an ISIS recruiter. The bureau says he was plotting an election day attack that would target large crowds. Investigators say he was taking steps by ordering AK-47 rifles, liquidating his family's assets, and buying one-way tickets for his wife and child to travel home to Afghanistan. Prosecutors have charged Tahedi with conspiring and attempting to provide material to support the Islamic State. He could face up to a 20-year prison sentence. I want to turn now to the war in Israel. Two people in the northern Israel community of Kiryat Shimona died when a Hezbollah rocket struck a bus as the IDF continues to strike Hezbollah targets in Lebanon. Israel's prime minister is appealing to the Lebanese people to take back their country from the Iranian proxy. CBN's Julie Stahl is on this story. Israel claims the IDF's attacks on Hezbollah could soon defeat Iran's proxy, the largest terror army in the world. When the smoke and fog have cleared, in Iran, they will realize that they have lost the most valuable asset there is, Hezbollah. Tuesday, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu delivered a message directly to the Lebanese people, 
calling on them to take this opportunity to overthrow the jihadists. We took out thousands of terrorists, including Nasrallah himself, and Nasrallah's replacement, and the replacement of his replacement. Today, Hezbollah is weaker than it's been for many, many years. Stand up and take your country back. Netanyahu recently made a similar plea to the Iranian people, imagining a day soon when Israel and Iran would be at peace. That could mean a whole new Middle East, with Israel forming alliances with peaceful Arab nations to live and prosper in the region. After suffering so many losses in leadership and munitions, Hezbollah is now calling for a ceasefire. And there's word that Iran is reportedly holding secret talks with the U.S. and Arab nations on a ceasefire that would end all fighting around Israel. Meanwhile, Israel continues its operations in southern Lebanon, IDF troops finding and destroying dozens of terror tunnels from which Hezbollah planned to launch October 7th-style attacks into Israel. We're investigating and destroying them. Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari described one recently discovered tunnel that went right under the border fence into Israel. We have updated that we have located and neutralized a tunnel about 25 meters long, which crossed about 10 meters beyond the fence into Israel. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. And Gordon, back to you. Let's continue to pray for Israel in their, in their hour of need. They're coming into uh, Yom Kippur, that's, that's on Friday. These are the high holy days. Uh, and, and they shouldn't be in this horrible war. It was all started by Hamas, and, and it's incredible how the world, the entire world seems to be turned against them. But we as Christians, we stand with them. We stand with our brothers, and we, we stand against this horrible hate, this hate that wants to wipe them off the map. So when you hear people say, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, Please stand against that and say, no, you don't get to call for a genocide of the Jewish people. They have it, an absolute right, a right of self-determination, a right to live in the land of their ancestors.